inspired by basically my upbringing. Um, it's kind of just a imitation of how I grew up. I grew up uh, as a Detroit public school kid and I had these very progressive uh, uh, middle school and high school teachers. My middle school teacher was a jazz trumpet player which is where when I learned to play piano by ear. My high school teacher was a viola player who obviously in, improvised so one day we came to orchestra and he had electric violins, amplifiers, jazz string arrangements, and he would point to us in orchestra and just say, stand up, take a solo. So prior to that, I was basically classically trained, but when I got to high school, uh, my teacher made everybody put the importance of improvising uh, alongside the importance of classical music. Thank you. 
I am Gwen Laster. Welcome to my master class. For those of you interested in learning how to improvise on your instrument, I'm going to go through a couple of songs that I really enjoy playing. The first is called Liliana, composed by a violinist, Michael Urbaniak. And it's a samba. It has kind of a Latin feel. I like this song for uh, people who are just starting off to improvise because it uh, basically uh, we work with the A minor scale and the A harmonic minor scale. And the melody is centered around the A minor scale. It kind of arpeggiates that way. So listen to this uh, opening melody. just centers around the A minor arpeggio and when you're an improviser one of the important things you can do at least starting off is to kind of stick close to the melody kind of like theme and variation when you play your um, symphonic works and um, you know you play different movements of Beethoven symphonies and, and and music like that where there's a theme and then there's the, the variation so let me give you an example of just not even thinking about improvising, but just thinking about making variations on the melody. Again, here's the melody. Now I'll do a little variation on that. So, those are kind of like the ideas that I want to uh, express to you and make you feel comfortable in knowing that you already have all of the technique and the skills and the listening particularly already under your belt from your orchestral music, from your etudes, from your scales that you already play. So when we get into looking at actually the music and the symbols and the chords that will be included on your music, um, You'll sometimes see, uh, you, you're looking at the chart now and you'll see uh, triangles there or capital M's that mean major. You'll see small M's that mean minor. So without all of that specific overload with that information, I want you to really think about using your ears. So here is the beginning of Liliana. What I played for you just then with the arpeggiated A minor was a little snippet of it, but I'm going to start from the very beginning of the song, which shifts to the A harmonic minor that I spoke about just a little earlier. And it actually starts on the third of E major, which is G sharp, which is the seventh that is raised in A minor. All right, so you just got to think about, oh, E major, what's the most important thing in an E major uh, triad, which is what this is, would be the third, because the third always characterizes whether it's major or minor. So major, that's the very first chord there in the beginning of this piece. So it starts. And so on. So that means that when this part of the song, when this part of the form of the song comes back around, this is when you're going to shoot in that that um, that G sharp. So let me just uh, play the melody for you and then um, let me improvise on a little bit using that A minor and that A harmonic minor. So here's the beginning and I'll play it arco instead of pits. Still natural A minor. Harmonic. 
harmonic minor. Back to A minor. Harmonic. So that's the idea of how you just tweak that scale just a little bit by that one note. So the challenge will be, at least for um, me as a player, as an improviser, as a jazz player, is to multitask and hear the accompaniment and know when to make those changes. So that just comes with practice. It comes with practicing with a backup track. It comes with um, practice, just like everything else. This piece is called Twinkling of an Eye, composed by violinist John Blake Jr. So when I'm improvising on this, um, I'm thinking about, uh, in the opening of, this, of the section of this song, I'm thinking about a lot of G major with C sharp in there. So here's that opening phrase. So I'm, uh, I'm just thinking about, first of all, there's these triads in there. So 
I want to um, design my improv around that 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 F that G major sound, but include that C major, and then the phrase ends on which is the F sharp minor, which is A major, and then it goes on which is the E minor nine and another uh, tr uh, arpeggio here. That's G major over uh, C and D over C, which is still basically, which is still that G major with that C sharp in it. And so the melody goes on. two measures that B sus you could think of that as like a major the E is like the sus the fourth of the B arpeggiate it down then we go to that B flat major nine and then it lands on the F major with the ninth so which is the F And then that leads in, into the D minor. D minor nine. So the E is the ninth of the D uh, minor, while the E is the seventh of the F major. And then the rest of it is staying in the D minor nine. The so that is the continuation of the D minor that goes on to the end of this. So um, you're thinking of overall G major. There's that G major with the C sharp, which is a raised 11. And then we're going on to the second ending, leading us to the E minor. Another arpeggio landing on D but it's still G major seven and D. Same thing with the C sharp. And B sus, A major. B flat though, so we have the F natural there. A sus, um, that A sus, the downbeat of the A sus is the fourth of that mesh of that chord, and then F major. So uh, here we are, twinkling of an eye. I'll play the melody in its entirety so you can kind of hear where it goes and see if you can hear these uh, chord progressions. Second ending. So it would play that last phrase twice, but and then we would go back and we would improvise over the form. So uh, let me improvise on it without any background and see if you can actually hear me going through these changes.
Okay, so. All right, twin thing of an eye, John Blake Jr., one of my favorites. All right, twinkling of an eye, John Blake. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 